about like my family and also like school and maybe like how good I do in school. Grades, my grades, um, my life in sports and my friends. They're like everything I care about. I worry about angry pelicans that want my sandwiches. My car, graduating next year. Soccer, school and work. <laughs> because soccer is stressful, work stinks and school's really hard. Drugs, I worry about drugs a lot too. The economy, I'm not having another terroristic attack. Terrorism, money. Um, making right choices, not knowing what I want to do with my life, what I'm doing with my life. Stress, anxiety, worry, fear. They all come as part of the package of modern day living. Inundated by media coverage of the latest disasters, acts of terror, and crime statistics can lead us to become consumed with unnecessary worry. For young people, worry sometimes is compounded by stressors we may have at school, overscheduled lifestyles, family issues, financial worries, and living in the future. It can all be so overwhelming that it's difficult to find our way to a clearer perspective. So what are you worried about? That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Kira. And I'm Matt. And, and this, this is, is Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. A few of the things that the teens on the street told us that they worried about were school, family, friends, and sports. We'll hear from them more a little later in the show, as well as meet our studio guest. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Danny, who will tell us what he worries about. I just got a credit card, so I'm really worried about that because I don't want to spend and get in debt. You know, another thing I'm really actually a big thing I'm worried about is the future, because I can't see the future. You know, I can't touch it and I can't, necessarily, I can't control it, so I really worry about that. I'm currently working on my nursing degree, and, but it was kind of tough to get there. And I really wanted to get it done get this thing done, I want to get all my classes together really well. I sat down with the teacher and this teacher looked at me and said, uh, you know, Danny, I don't know if you can get in my class, we'll see what happens. And for some reason, it was a moment for me that I realized, I walked out, I had this like little prayer moment, so you know, God, I don't know what's gonna happen, I give everything over to you. And that's what kind of gets me through, uh, is I just let go and let God. Teenagers' biggest worries, uh, just making it through high school, I think that's a huge worry for us. You know, so I think for some teenagers. You know, big worry for me was uh, to fit in. A big worry was to be cool. What college I want to go to, taking your SATs and all that stuff. I mean, those are huge worries. Pleasing your parents, getting a car. Being a teenager, there's so many things that we can just, that comes in your life so fast. I think teenage years move very, very quick because there's, so there's so many big changes in life. And because it's, I was such a control freak, and all these huge changes going on in my life, I think I was really worried a lot of times. It's like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? I think it's, for me, in a lot of ways it's normal. It's about how you, how you deal with being worried about stuff like that. Like Danny said, I have a lot of the teenage worries of a normal teen, I think. But one of my biggest worries is the health of my family because, you know, people have passed away of certain diseases and cancers. So I'm just worried about my parents and my grandparents. So that's definitely one of my biggest worries. Yeah, I worry about like the exact same thing. So let's go to our studio guest and see how they feel about this. Okay, they are Chris, Kelly, Andrew, Mary, Nick, Danielle, and Patrick. So what are the things that you guys worry about the most? I think I worry the most about like my family and my friends and their well-being as well as like money for college because like it's so hard to find it. I worry mostly about my schooling and how I'm going to get all my stuff done because I procrastinate a lot. <laughs> so a lot of the projects don't get done till the last day, but then everything gets a little overwhelming. So I get really worried at the last minute. Yeah, or worrying about like tests the next day and quizzes and mm. all that kind of stuff. Well, I know for me, I, I worry most about, you know, getting into college. You know, what, what am I going to do with my life? You know, like what's going to happen in the future? So. I think everyone's worried too. I, it's more the future in general for me. Like where I'm going to be at like a couple years from now. Am I going to be successful? How am I going to be successful? Am I going to be where I want to be in, at that point in time? Basically what every else said, I worry the same amount. Like school, tests. I'm like in all honors classes, so it's like really hard to keep up with all the work and projects. And according to the U.S. Department of Health, a survey taken at one high school revealed that of the 815 students surveyed, 70% reported being stressed out. Being stressed out can lead us to all sorts of physical and emotional troubles. Physical problems such as headaches, stomach aches, sleep problems, feeling tired and on edge 
can lead to feelings of wanting to withdraw from normal activities. This is one of the reasons why finding appropriate ways to cope with our worries is really important. Next, the teens on the street tell us if they worry a lot and how they cope with their worries. I don't worry too much. I kind of just go with the flow. There's nothing really to worry about as long as you're still living and like you're happy. I don't really think I worry too much. Um, I pretty much take life how it comes. I do worry like when something happens, but I'm not one of those people who worry like constantly. No, I don't think I worry too much. I just live every day as it comes. I don't think I worry too much because I'm very easygoing. No, I don't think I worry too much because life's too short to be worried about things. I think you should just have a good time. It's more fun to be spontaneous than to worry about things. Yeah, I worry too much. We all worry. I wish I didn't, but it happens. I think I have right to worry as much as I do. Yeah, it stresses me out a lot. Um, I really should stop worrying about things. Cope with my worries by hanging out and kind of ignoring them. I cope my worries by eating. I uh, work hard, I enjoy life, come to the beach, hang out with my friends, shoot the breeze. I have a good time and uh, and then I worry and then I have a good time. I don't know, I'll take a nap, like an hour nap and I'm good to go for the rest of the day. If I am worried about something, I'll probably do something to fix the situation so that I'm not anymore. I like shoot around in soccer, it just gets rid of like problems. I try to talk to somebody about it and just like get through it, I guess. I usually talk to my friends or my family. I know I definitely worry a lot. I worry about like everything underneath the sun. And um, I guess my parents help me get through it, like talk to me and tell me like it's not that big of a deal, that kind of thing. I do the same thing. Whenever I start getting stressed out and worrying about things, I speak to my parents asking them for advice and usually they give pretty good advice. I remember when I was a kid I used, I used to worry a lot. Um, I would kind of lay in bed at night and you know just just be thinking about things and I think praying you know each night would help me get through it. I guess I'm like a real dork but <laughs> when I used to get really worried I still do sometimes. I'll like whip on my hacky sack because me and my friends used to always play hacky sack. I'll just play hacky sack for like an hour straight and like then after that there's no worries in the world because you're so happy so I mean it's really dorky but that's what I used to do. I think I worry about a lot of things, but mostly like about my friends and everything. So like most of the time, like I'll talk to them and make sure they're okay, and then like I know that they're okay, so I try not to worry as much. My parents would probably say that I worry too much, but I like to think of it more as like I plan ahead. Yeah. So I guess that's kind of how I deal with my own worries is because I try and plan it out. Right. I clean when I get really <laughs> stressed out. My friends are like, oh, go, oh, geez, she's cleaning out the closet. What's going on? So you know, I think. We all struggle with worries from time to time. It's a part of life. But it's also important to recognize the difference between worry and concern. In the words of adventurer Harold Stevens, there is a great difference between worry and concern. A worried person sees a problem, and a concerned person solves a problem. The key is staying active and focusing on those things that won't afford you the time to be overly invested on the issues you're fretting about. Next, Danny tells us about how it isn't good to be preoccupied with the things we worry about because then we miss out on the rest of our life worrying about one thing. In Spanish, the word to worry, it really looks like in the word to English to be preoccupied. And I was thinking about that one day. So I just thought to him as well, if I'm worrying, then I'm being very preoccupied with myself. And I'm being very preoccupied with the thing that I'm worried about. And when I realized for myself, is that cuts me off from things. The big one for me was it was cutting me off from relationships with other people and it was cutting me off from my relationship with God. Because since I was pre preoccupied with myself and preoccupied with that one certain thing, there was nothing else that I was really focusing on. So I wasn't paying attention to the things around me because I wanted to make sure that that was taken care of. If I'm so preoccupied and so worried about you know, what I'm continuing to do, I'm not going to enjoy anything. I'm not gonna, there's so much in the world to see and to enjoy. And to, if I'm so caught up in that kind of stuff, I'm not going to be able to experience the gifts that God has given us. I love to control things and I like to do it my, myself. Kind of like push God out of the way a little bit. He's like, oh God, you know, I can handle this. You know, I can take care of this. Don't worry about it. I got it this time. And I always fall short. It never goes the way I exactly want it. Speaking from experience, if you're really that worried, worried about something, you might have a good reason to be worried about it. So no matter where you are or where you're going and you're worrying about something, there's always that, that moment where you can just stop, pause, reflect, and talk to God and give it over. 
that would be my best advice. If I didn't have my faith, I'd probably be somewhere in a corner just twitching because I'd be so worried all the time, to be honest with you. What faith means for me is you don't necessarily know what it is or what's gonna happen. Like, that's the idea of faith. You just have to have faith. Just letting it go and giving it to God. So can you guys think of a time when you became so preoccupied with something else that you lost sight of everything else in your life? I'm an Eagle Scout, so when I was trying to earn my Eagle to get the, like, the big award and the badge and stuff, it's like a six months project where you have to do your project and get it all written up and send it in and get it approved. And I was kind of down to the wire on it. It came to a point now where my friends are like, hey, were you there, Patrick? Or do you remember this? And they're like, oh, never mind. You were working our Eagle. I'm like, oh. So I was like MIA for like three months where I didn't even talk to any of my friends. When I was like in my sophomore year in um, high school, I was really like preoccupied with making everybody happy, like my parents happy, my teachers proud of me, making sure everybody liked me. That I eventually just lost sight of who I was. And through prayer and meditation, I finally figured out that you know, it really doesn't matter what people think about me as long as I know who I am and I'm happy with it. At last week of exams, the night before, we I could not get to sleep because I was just thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What am I going to write about? What are the essays going to be like? It was just so, like, nerve-wracking. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, I'll spend nights just, like, worrying about stuff, and then I lose sleep, and I get, like, three hours of sleep, and then I have to go to school, and it just, like, ruins my whole day, and then I'm so tired. So, yeah. During the school year, I became so preoccupied with becoming a better wrestler that I really lost track of my schoolwork, trying to achieve this certain status that I thought I could get to. And then about a week before a due date, I had to write a huge essay. So I'd come home from school every day and then from like 3 to 10, write the essay and go to sleep and then do it again. And I didn't have time to work out or wrestle or anything and I completely got out of shape and the paper wasn't up to par, and it was just disastrous. I know my friends always get preoccupied with like a boyfriend or girlfriend, and then they, they always like leave you out of stuff, and it's just, they get so preoccupied, they lose their friends. It's really hard. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter six, verse 31, Jesus says, so do not worry, do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? What are we to wear? Your heavenly Father knows you need them all. Set your hearts on the kingdom first, and on God's saving justice, and all these other things will be given you as well. It's important to take a break, to pause, spend time in prayer with God, to help us to get through our worries. Next, Danny tells us how he is inspired by how Jesus took the time to pause and pray during his ministry on earth. And how the rosary is another great source of prayer and meditation which can help us to cope with our worries. I really do worry a lot, because life can be really stressful sometimes, you know what? I thought that the teenage years were tough. The truth is, growing up is even tougher. Life never slows down. Life continues to, to get busier and busier and busier. And thank goodness that God calls us to say, you know, pause for a second. If there was no pause in my life, then I would be continuously stressed out and worried all the time. Maybe that's just the way I'm built. I don't know. So, cause some people are not worry wards. Some people are just real easygoing people. Me, I'm not as fortunate. So prayer is so huge for me. Christ knew exactly what he was doing. Because he's always surrounded by a lot of people, huge crowds, a lot going on all the time. It must have been very overwhelming for him sometimes. He had to go walk away and allow himself to, to kind of reboot, rebuild his strength so he could be better for, for people. I really need for myself to take a break from life I do throughout the day and just pause, reflect, pray, and just reboot myself and then get back out in the world and to be a, a better use to, to people around me. And uh, prayer is just, just a great way of doing that. A rosary is such a, uh, a great gift that we've been given. What I've been doing lately is I say a rosary when I go to work because I have about like a 15, 20 minute drive. So I'll pray my rosary in the morning. You're getting all the elements. You're getting prayer, you're getting meditation, you're getting scripture readings, you're getting time with God, and you're getting time with, with Mary. It's such a great way for me to improve my relationship with God, because that's what the rosary is for. For me, is to get closer to God and to deepen my faith. And absolutely, a rosary is, I think for me, is the biggest gift that we've been given for prayer and meditation. I really agree with his last comment about the rosary being the biggest gift because it's helped me so much in my life, especially when I get really stressed out. I'll use it to calm myself down and meditate on scripture and just listen to what God is asking me to do in my life. And that's why I have this decade of the rosary as a bracelet 
and I just carry it around. So whenever I need to pray it, I have it right there with me. Yeah. Um, when I was little, my grandma told me that I used to always like just steal her rosary, and I used to like go and every little um, bead and like ask for somebody. Like one of my worries, like I'd be like, I'll pray from like my grandma, but I, of course I didn't know how to pray the rosary. But you know that was my way of praying the rosary when I was little. And then um, my little cousin saw the rosary in my room, and she's like, I want to learn how to pray the rosary. So since my grandmother taught me how to pray the rosary, I was able to teach her. So now, you know, sometimes we pray the rosary together, and that helps her to understand, you know, prayer is an important part of life. Nick, your bracelet is really cool. Like, I wish I had one. <laughs> one thing that helps me to get through worrying is the song, Be Not Afraid, I Go Before You Always. Um, because, you know, I love that song, and I always hum it to myself if I'm, like, stressed out. But it's really true, like, what the song is about. So that helps me get through my worries. I know like Kelly said, like I have trouble sleeping at night because I worry a lot. Like I worry throughout the day, like constantly. So like I pray to God at night and that usually puts me to sleep or like sometimes I just meditate and like it just like leaves all my worries behind and it really helps a lot. Yeah, my grandpa used to say, yea, thou I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. And that always comes to mind to me every time I feel like stressed and everything, I feel like that reminds me God's there with me. He's gonna protect me. He's gonna make sure all my worries are fine. I, the Bible also inspires me, like um, the story of the loaves and the fishes, everyone was worried there's not going to be enough food. And like Jesus provided for 5,000 people. What is he not going to do provide for our little worries that we worry about every day? Seriously. Even like praying to God, like as Danny said, you're leaving it in God's hands. And it just takes a lot off your shoulders and just helps you, like relieves you. There are many steps we can take to help avert becoming overly stressed or reduce the amount we already have. One of the things we can do is try to look at the issue objectively. In other words, what is the true likelihood of this happening? Gather the facts and try writing them down. Doing this can help you put things in perspective. And can help you feel that you're taking positive action. Next, the teens on the street give us some more advice on how to deal with our worries. Try dealing with your worries by talking to people. Just relax and everything will fall into place. Just relax. If you worry too much, you should just know that everything's going to be all right. Nothing could be that bad. Think about life in a short value. Like, what if you die tomorrow? Don't worry about your problems now. You know, there really are more desperate problems to worry about. So if you've got a lot in your mind, you should think about what other people have on their mind. And uh, that'll really take a load off you, I think. If you worry too much, I feel that you just got to get out of your house. Paranoia and misery loves its company. Just live life to the fullest. Let go of these things because most of them are really unnecessary. Just to like sit and find somebody good enough to listen to you and have like some faith in yourself. So do you have any advice on how to deal with worry? When I was young, you know, like I was saying earlier, how uh, I would get really like preoccupied at nights. Um, I would usually sit up either uh, either praying or I would uh, read read comic books as, as a little kid, and you know that kind of just helped get my mind off of uh, what I was worrying about. So that that helped a lot. Yeah, like Andrew, when I was um, younger, I used to have a lot of problems sleeping, and I used to like not want to sleep in my own house. I'd have to sleep at, like my grandparents' house. So like I used to go to my grandparents' house, and like they would like pray with me so I could be able to go to sleep. It was really cute. One of the big things that helps me is spiritual reading, especially from uh, St. Faustina's diary, where she says, or she heard from Jesus, fear nothing, I am with you always. And if this person responds with a sincere heart, Jesus, I trust in you, he will find comfort in all his anxieties and fears. And that, it just speaks straight to my heart because it's just, I feel so comforted by Jesus' love and mercy. That's really cool. Yeah. One of the, like, I, like, uh, I started taking guitar class in my school um, for an elective, and one of my hobbies when I worry a lot is I play guitar, because I really like it a lot, or I just, like, go for a walk, and I really need to laugh when I worry, so I go out with my friends a lot. I like to go for a walk all the time when I'm worried about something, like, after dinner, we'll go take the dogs out for a walk, and it's really good to get that fresh air, and it makes you rethink things and realize there's really nothing to worry about. I'm like Danielle, I hang out with my BFF, we can just laugh about everything, and suddenly there's not a care in the world, we'll just go out, we'll just, we can just drive around for like an hour and a half, and just laughing at random things, and it's all good. Yeah, even just like taking a deep breath and just reassuring yourself that everything's going to be okay. 
I always nap. Sometimes I come home from school and I, like, if I get a bad grade or I'm really stressed, I'll just sleep for like a half hour and I wake up and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go now. I can do it. When I worry, it's not often, but when I do, it's really huge. So I'll just sleep on it and I'll wake up refreshed, renewed, and ready to go. We have already touched on how prayer and our relationship with God can help us to deal with and get through our worries. Next, the teens on the street tell us if their faith helps them to cope with their worries. And if they've ever let go and given their worries to God. How does your faith help you cope with your worries? Um, I guess like my faith in God helps me think about like the problems I have in my life. There must be something going on that's going to teach me a lesson and that I learn about from it. It keeps me very open-minded. I believe in God, so like I believe that He'll help me through everything that I pray to Him. You always know that everything is going to be alright because you got God. I believe in God and if God is with me, everything's fine. Have you ever heard of the saying, give it up to God? Have you ever tried to just give your worries to God? What happened? I've never tried that. I'd be too afraid. I've never tried to give my worries up to God. I've actually never heard that saying, but there must be a good meaning behind it. I never heard that saying, but I heard that if you give your worries to God, it'll make everything better. Personally, I don't adhere to it. It works. Yes, I heard of the saying, give it up to God, and um, if you believe in it, then it will help you and guide you through the rest. Fear not is a repeated theme throughout the Bible. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, the angel appearing to Mary tells her not to be afraid. Again, in chapter 5, Jesus tells Simon not to be afraid. Next, Spotlight guest Danny tells us how reading scriptures like these helps him to get past his worries. I can't remember how many times the Bible says don't be afraid. I can't remember that number now. I used to know that. But anytime that uh, people face in front of an angel or Christ talking about don't be afraid, a lot of times I worry because I'm afraid. I think a lot of worry comes from fear. And when I'm afraid, I remember when Christ says, don't be afraid, or one of the angels that come down to, you know, to Mary or whatever, and, and whoever, you know, the shepherds, and say, you know, don't be afraid. And that's, it's so powerful. And it's like, if I could just remember that and have that in my heart all the time, then I'd never have to worry about anything. Because Christ is telling me, Danny, don't ever worry, don't be afraid, I'm gonna take care of you. Just allow me to work in your life. So how does your faith help you deal with your worries? When I'm worrying, I can always remember like God is here and He'll always protect me and I'm always in His hands. God can help you through it and God will be there for you. And just having that thought, it really helps. As Danny said in the video that it says in the Bible to be not afraid so many times, Pope John Paul II used this to address his, uh, the youth that he was talking to, uh, to be not afraid. Yeah, I think if God takes such, such an emphasis on saying, be not afraid, obviously he's telling us to just, you know, relax, don't worry about it, because he has, has everything in control. Especially in our culture these days, it's all, everything's built on fear. Everyone's always afraid about something. Yeah. I think we really need to learn to let that go. And you know, a quote that really, really speaks to me is this quote by Philip Gully, and it says, fear can keep you up all night, but faith makes one fine pill, so. That's a really like that. cool. That's really cool. I've never awesome. heard it. Yeah. Um, I think when the angel Gabriel came to the Blessed Mother and told her that she was announcing the birth of Jesus, our Savior, you know, she, she wasn't afraid. She, she, the angel told her to not be afraid, and she had faith that God would help her throughout this struggle because she really didn't know what was going to happen. She still had to tell Joseph that she was pregnant with Jesus, so she really had everything to fear, but she didn't let that fear consume her. Exactly. There was so much that she could worry about, like, well, what are people going to say about me? But she didn't. She trusted in God. Yeah, exactly. Like, she didn't let fear or worrying get in her way, and she just left it up to God. One of my friend's senior quotes this year was, lots to think about, nothing to worry about, which is really applicable here because God put all this beautiful creation on the earth, and we can learn about all of it and think about all of it, but there's nothing to worry about. The next time you're at Mass, listen very carefully and pray in your heart as the presider prays. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Rest in the confidence that this prayer is prayed throughout the world and it is intended for you too. How do you get through your worries? We'd love to know. 
contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And we'll leave you today with this final thought. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, we read, Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be alarmed, for I am your God. I give you strength. Truly, I help you. Truly, I hold you firm with my saving right hand. So keep the faith and trust that God will help you get through your worries and your troubles. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.